Now it's Xbox 360's turn, and we're going to dive right in. At number 10 is Max Payne 3. We're continuing Max's story throughout his life. He has some troubles. He's dealing with the death of his wife. And you can see that he is more torn up from the last game previously. And he is in a country where he's just trying to protect somebody, only to find out that it's kind of just went to shit and he doesn't know what to do anymore. So he has to battle through the group, the rival group that's trying to kill his boss. And he goes in only to find out that he doesn't know what to do anymore. And I like that it took away from the action of the first game. And it's more gritty, grimy. Um, it also does have him more in his own devices. And he's trying to battle that as well. You do see that it's, it's a first person shooter kind of thing. It's trying to blend a little bit of action meets first person shooter. So if you've never played it, I do recommend it. At number nine is Fight Night Champion. The reason why this boxing game is on the list is the storyline is amazing. You're an up and coming boxer who doesn't want to sign with a rival manager. And the manager says, well, if you're not going to sign with me, you're going to go to prison. And he does. He goes to prison. He battles his way through, gets out, and then has to become another rising star and get his way up back in the ranks. He has to figure out what to do. Does he want to expose the manager? Does he want to just live his life? And I really enjoyed the rivalry of the new champion who is on there and you have to battle it. He does have plot armor, makes the last fight really difficult, but you will enjoy the battle and you will enjoy the victory once you finish that guy and knock him out. It, it took a lot just to figure out the pattern, but I was in just in awe by the way they did everything. At number eight is a game that a lot of people consider a GTA clone, but by all means it's not. It is Sleeping Dogs. This is a game, it's open world, and you are a cop who is undercover and trying to figure out what's going on in the world of the mafia, and you have to stop everybody and not get exposed. I enjoy this game. Sadly, it doesn't have any replay value, but the story is so good that I will delete my save and start fresh and brand new. I've played this multiple times and beat it multiple times, and I like that you work your way up in the organization, and you also have a character who is unique and also uses martial arts, which is not a lot of other games have this. They build on the story, they make everything, the world is vast, and, and you want to see all of it, and you want to play as much as you can, so definitely try Sleeping Dogs. In at number seven is Call of Duty Black Ops. I enjoyed the storyline, I enjoyed zombies, I really dug the way they did everything. It, again, it is a Call of Duty game, but I like the little bit of subtle changes that you saw within everything. I really dug the way that they tried to do multiplayer online more and build upon that. And we have now Call of Duty Black Ops all the way up to now we're getting six, seven. I hope to get more Call of Duty Black Ops. And please always add a campaign. If <laughs> I don't think they'll ever watch this, but if they do, campaign always, please. In at number six is another first person shooter. This is Battlefield Bad Company 2. I really dug this. I found this later on in life with uh, Xbox Game Pass. This is a game where you are thrown into a company because you messed up. You did so badly that they can't get rid of you, but it's still a write up and you have to go to this company. I dug that they expand upon it and they made a sequel and you still have the same group of characters that you grew to love and you get to see them going through another round of shenanigans and you have to figure out what they're going to do. Really dug this shooter. It definitely will be on my list for any first person shooter games. You have to try this one. It's on Game Pass all the time and it will always be a win for me. Next is number five and this is a stealth game. Mind you, you hear me all the time say I hate stealth games. I don't like them. They're one of my pet peeves. I don't like to play a stealth anything. If it's in the game, I kind of sometimes will turn it off. But that tells you right there how good this game is. It's Dishonored. I love that they give you both options. It's kind of like a win of like, hey, do you want to stealth all the way through? Or do you just want to run and gun? You don't care. I love that option. And most of the time, I would do a little bit of both. I would say, okay, I need a stealth right here because I don't have enough. I need to get through it. 
And other times I'm like, screw it, I really don't care. I want to just knock everybody out. And I love that they always, in this genre, had multiple endings. You are Corvo and you are basically betrayed. And you're set into a mode of where they dishonor you and you have to work your way through and save the princess and all the royal family. And I loved that they made a stealth game where I can be able to choose how I want to see the puzzle and figure it out. It grimy, gritty, you are in the sewers a lot, you're working your way through, there's a little bit of magic, a little bit of fighting. You can play the game any way you want. And I love the this the open feel of it where you don't have to be confined to something. You can choose how you want to play the game. And I recommend it to anybody who's never heard of this game. It's very rare. I don't think anybody's not heard of this game. But if you haven't, try this game out. In at number four is a Halo game. And I'm knowing you're racking your brain, probably Halo 1, 2, 3. No, it is Halo Reach. And the reason why is I like Master Chief. I, I enjoy the games and I've always played all the Halo games. But Halo Reach had a special place in my heart because, again, it's a group of misfits. The team that nobody was going to expect to do well. They know that their mission is a, a fail mission. They they understand that they're not going to make it out. But they play and go through and do everything by the book. And at the end, you see a group of heroes who nobody expected. So definitely try Halo Reach. It's a really good game. A lot of people don't talk about it, just like Gears of War Judgment. Yes, it's not on my top 10, but this is another game. Same thing, group of misfits. So definitely try Halo Reach. It's a knockout. The third game on the list is a horror game, and it's also another shooter, and it is Left 4 Dead 2. I really dug this story. It's a bunch of people getting together, kind of like Walking Dead, and they have to get out of this situation they're in. It's kind of like Dead Rising as well, where you are in a gritty area of like the mall, and you have to figure out how to get out of all these situations, and you have a people group that none of them really get along but they're like yeah whatever let's just do what we got to do and so i enjoy the weapons i enjoy the, the zombies they are funny in themselves and the way the, the one-liners are for this game are also 10 out of 10 so definitely play this campaign if you have not played left for dead one or two try it for sure i i do too because it's a little bit better in my opinion they polished it just a little bit more yes a lot of people like one a lot but for me, it's two all the way. The second game on the list is GTA 4. Now you're saying to yourself, why four? Well, I also like the story of Nico. He was a guy who went into the world of the States and did not know anything. He's trying to work his way up in the world. I liked it more than five because even though there is a lot of stuff that like irritates people, I was used to it. I played through the PlayStation era where you didn't have save points, you didn't have points. If you lost the mission, you had to start over again. So 4 was normal for me. I really dug that you got through and you saw the storyline of him getting his girlfriend and figuring out his life. And his cousin was hilarious. I loved his cousin. His cousin was a 10 out of 10 in the story. And the way they had it played out was so unique and different for this. And I love the glitches. There's a lot of glitches in the map where you had to find it and you would go in and then something explode and then go in the air. And it wasn't game breaking either. It was something that was like comical. You enjoyed it. You're in the community. You'd be like, hey, did you see this glitch? You... We were all looking for glitches in this game and I loved it. I enjoyed the way they played out all the characters. It kind of reminded me a little bit of 3, even though he was talking in this. It still had that unique feel of it's brand new to the world. It's a little bit more expanded. You had New York. It was it felt like a big open New York. And I also dug that you could at any point, just like the other GTA games, do whatever you wanted to do. But I love that they had DLC that was included in the disc if you wanted to buy it. You could get DLC and it was like an extra $20, $40. So definitely for sure try this game. It's a knockout for me. 
And you're saying to yourself, what could be GTA 4? And that is Skate 3. I am a Tony Hawk fan, and so whenever another skate game came into the mix, I was very wary about it. But this game was so unique and different, and it had also glitches that were hilarious that you had to find. It took you off the board. You were running around in an open world. You were trying to crash into things like Thrasher and you were going in and you had a group of people that were trying to be your coach and trying to battle. And I also loved that there really was no ending to it. Like you can play and get to the top of the list and get all the boards sold and everything like that, but you could still keep going. You can go and find the rest of the skaters and keep playing. And I love that it was a clunky mess, but it was still so fun. It was way better than a lot of the other Tony Hawk games at the time. There was Tony Hawk Shred. They were trying different unique things in Tony Hawk. But we just wanted a skate game that was the same and a little bit better in the graphics and a little bit better in that. And that's what they gave us. EA kind of listened to us and expanded upon the world and made Skate 1, 2, 3 and just knocked it out of the park with three. And so that's why Skate 3 is on the list as number one. And there you have it, everybody. That is my top 10 for Xbox 360. Yes, I know there's so many amazing games and it was such a difficult thing to throw in a list of Xbox 360 games when you had like thousands to choose from. Let me know, what are your top 10? If not, what is some of your go-to games Yes, I know a lot of people in the comments are going to say, this game's not on here, this game's not on here, and go ahead. You can tell me in the comments below, but keep it civil because we don't need any fighting in the comments, please. If you're new, please consider subscribing. It doesn't help out the channel. If you're rolling out, please give it a like before you leave, and I'll catch you next time. Xbox 360 hype all the way. She's got the beats. Stand back, she's got the dingy knee and hand with the NHS recording. She's in command from 8 bit 1 to the latest craze. Linda, the gamer gal, she's here to amaze.